Okay, so I've been meeting with uh, Trover's witnesses for a few months now. We've been going through the uh, Bible study that they that we do. Um, so uh, they're really lovely people, um, really nice. Um, but it, when we've been going through this, every so often we hit the um, Trinity doctrine, which obviously they don't believe in, and I very much do believe in. So we keep clashing on that. Um, I've asked them a few questions they've not been able to answer, so they keep saying they're going to go back to their local expert, who's this guy who's absolutely named Magic. Um, and then when they come back to me, they, they've kind of forgotten what he said, or uh, they're not able to re-explain it for whatever reason. So instead of going back and forth like that, they've decided they, to invite uh, him along so we can talk together. Um, so what I've done is I've prepared this... Uh, this sort of article to go through that's very much in the same style as this with a paragraph and a little question to make sure we're all following it um, which kind of covers every reason why I believe in the Trinity and all the questions I've got to see what he thinks because um, I mean yeah we've been through this we've been through the appendix of this and it's it's not working for me I was given given this which is terrible um, I mean this is just riddled with just uh, uh, quotes that have been they've got the ellipses in so there's bits missing to completely flip the meaning of it and they've used it to support their arguments whereas if you actually go to the original it, it's the opposite um, I was given this as well which is no much no better um, so yeah it's kind of their last ditch effort they've got the guy to come and talk to me who's apparently he knows all this stuff and he'll be able to answer all my questions but um so yeah, this isn't about trying to embarrass anyone or make anyone look stupid. It's uh, just going to give give every chance for them to try and explain how they see it, kind of thing. Um, so hopefully this will be helpful for somebody. Um, uh, just pray it all goes well. Yes, yeah. I was saying to Magic that you've compiled a. Um, uh, yeah, so what I did, because obviously when we do the study, yeah. we do it with this, with the, we go through a little bit and have a question, yeah, and right, so yeah. I thought it was, like where we've been doing it before, we've been just sort of throwing verses at each other and okay. it kind of doesn't go anywhere, so I thought if I'd kind of structure it a little bit, then it might flow better, yeah. I don't know if that makes sense, yeah. So, and, and then I thought also, because then I can explain like what I mean by the Trinity mm -hmm. and uh all the right and so it just kind of so so it's kind of it's all on the same page sort of thing so um i've printed uh i've printed a, some out so, you, so so i'll i'll, I'll read most of it because um i've done a couple of last minute edits as well because okay. like, so right. it's about 99 percent the same but there yeah. might be a couple of bits that but um it looks really long but it's just because it's big print i think okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Read it out and then we'll see. Uh, yeah, and just see sort of. Oh, you're giving us a copy. Yeah, yeah so we can all follow it. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's basically just yeah. works the same way as, mm -hmm. as this. Uh, yeah, because yeah, we, we've. Um, I'm, I'm going to just record on my laptop as well, so just mm -hmm. in case I can want to refer back. Is that all right? Oh, yeah, fine. Okay. Lewis has been, as you know, the yeah. Trinity, it believes the Trinity. So what we've been doing is we've been mm -hmm. showing him scriptures to... Okay. You, oh, and fine. he's been then showing us scriptures yeah, to fine. prove that there is yeah, a Trinity. Yeah. And we've been showing him yeah. scriptures to prove that it isn't yeah, a Trinity. Fine, as you I say, know. scriptures just mm -hmm. back and forth. Yeah. Where is this? Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, and then yeah, we've been we've been through the chapter in here, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and then went like through the appendix as well, mm -hmm. uh, and I just just wasn't seeing. It. And then uh, Josie gave me this. Uh, yes, this yeah, one, but I think it's quite an old one now. But yeah, it's, but it's it's still, the old information that is set up to date. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, I was, I was I, yeah I had a couple of big problems with this one because I was like I was checking the quotes on it and it was yeah. sort of. Like, like it's it does things where it mm -hmm. starts a sentence and puts a dot 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 and then finishes the sentence yeah. and sort of makes a point that way. But then, if you go and look at the original mm -hmm. and you see what it says in the dot dot dot, it actually 
it completely changes the meaning of the okay. sentence. So I was a bit was quite worried about that one. But right. so uh, uh, Robin gave me gave me this one to have a look at, and this was this one wasn't so bad. But I think it had a. But yeah, it just sort of made more sense mm -hmm. to sort of talk to someone about it. And um, that's all right. So yeah, so I'll, 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 I'm going to go off the screen because I changed it yeah, a couple of. <laughs> I print, sort of printed it out last week, and then I thought, yeah. oh, I forgot to put that in. And yeah, it's always like that. Thing. Yeah, prepare some document. Yeah. <laughs> Um, cause yeah, sort of, as you're here, I wanted to try and give you as much because mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know if Josie showed you. I, I, I gave there's like a list of about sixty or so points that mm -hmm. I had, but um, it was kind. Of, it was just kind of like a big block of information, and it makes more sense mm -hmm. to just go. It like, was talk. mostly scriptures, wasn't it? Yeah, it was all. It was all scripture. Yeah, yeah, which, yeah um, to check. As yeah. I said to you at the time. The scriptures that you gave me proved to me that there wasn't a trinity. Okay. But uh, you know that's what they seem to prove to me more. Okay. That Jehovah is Jehovah mm -hmm. and Jesus yeah. is Jesus. Yeah. Although I saw your scriptures, but anyway, we have other answers. Um, okay. Well, you know, let's let's start. All right. Yeah. Let's start. Yeah. Um, did. No. So, do you have the prayer? Or? Do you want to, yeah, we do want to. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. okay. Our Heavenly Father, Jehovah, we are so pleased that we can uh, meet here together and discuss your holy writings. And now I would like to discuss more about your identity and who you really are. But I ask you, please give us your Holy Spirit and help us so we can enjoy our conversation and we can enjoy getting uh, closer to the truth of about you. But I ask you, please listen to our prayer in the name of Son Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Oh, well, it would be a good time, yeah. It works out alright. I was about to start without you. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops, today. I'll just move it around. Okay, sorry about that. It's alright. Um, you got room there? Yes. Okay. Okay, yeah, so I was saying I've. I've uh, you can, so you can follow along. I've printed out a uh, thing there, which mm -hmm. is basically just follows the same kind of setup as the the, the study book. Right. So and I'll, I'll I'll do most of the reading because I've I said I've changed a bit of it as well because um like I printed it out last week and then I f there's a couple of bits I forgot to put in so it's about ninety nine percent the same so <laughs> I won't get too lost but there's just a couple okay. of little but um. Yeah, so uh, if we're if everyone's ready, mm -hmm. um, okay, I'll start then. So, uh, uh, what what is the Trinity? Okay, the the Trinity, better referred to as the Triunity, is a core doctrine of most denominations of Christianity. The most basic and common description is roughly as follows. Uh, the Father, the Word and the Holy Spirit are three eternal persons, but one being in essence. Uh, this description can understandably be quite difficult to comprehend, as there's nothing in the world that can accurately be compared to it. Uh, usually when we see three people, we immediately recognise three entirely separate beings. But God is not human or animal or biological, so the same assumption need not apply to him. So, uh, so the, yeah, the question we've got is, um, what's the? Uh, how can we simply describe the doctrine of the Trinity? Well, for me, the question is because you are referring to here the, the, Trinity, the Trinity as a Christian teaching. Is the Trinity a Christian doctrine, really? Sorry. Is the Trinity a Christian doctrine in origin? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, which I'll, I'll get to a bit later. Where I, I think. Oh, really? Well. Uh, the Trinit uh, Trinities are well, well, well known in the world, pre well, pre-Christian world. Egyptian mm -hmm. religion was full of Trinity. Babylonians were full of uh, Trinity. Uh, someone who had a direct impact on our Western understanding of Trinity was Plato, that predates Christ as well. Yeah. So there is nothing Christian in Trinity. Okay. That was implanted much later by philosophy. Because that was common philosophy of the Middle East. So, uh, starting here, that the foundation here, that's what I can disagree with. This is a re-implementation of the uh, ancient Middle East understanding of, of gods okay. into the, uh, the, on, onto the, the, the Christian teaching later, when, to, when uh, Christianity was to be, become a much more uh, acceptable or approved religion during the Roman times. Okay. So, 
Trinity is not in the Bible. Trinity is not a Christian or uh, ancient Jewish uh, the teaching. Okay. Trinity is coming from the Middle East. Of course, that was common. Okay. And that's why, comparing that, it is true that most, I agree with this one, most uh, denominations of Christianity accept a uh, Yeah, that's, that's all I want to say at this point, is that most but do. Yeah. <laughs> it is not a teaching of Christians. Okay. Yeah, okay, so I Neither that. Jesus nor, nor first century Christians <laughs> were teaching that or understanding that or uh, applying because for them that was pagan teaching. Mm. Okay. I'm um, oh, sorry. Okay, so I did give um, or lent mm. Lewis the yeah. two Babylons books. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen and it yeah, gives, yeah. I, I lent it to him to read all yeah. about the uh, trinities in the Babylonian times yeah. and well, Egyptian no, times. It's yeah. Well, it's not, not a hidden knowledge, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because when you go to the British Museum, you see all the, uh, all the, not all, but many of Egyptian gods, there are three of them, because okay. that was, it's, what was a common perception of some sort of, of a god, that, yeah. that, that is true. Okay, um, oh, the one, one thing I would say about this is, uh, yeah, it might be true that there's other kinds of trinity or triads in other religions, other pagan faiths, but then you also have like a father god and a son god in other faiths, so it's kind of it doesn't really matter either way if it's if they've got the same thing too where you can't really disprove it because they if some have got this then some have got the other as well, so you'd have to rule them all out. By no, I'm not saying we have to rule them all out, but uh Flatly accepting it's a Christian teaching. Oh, no, no. It's wrong. Yeah, yeah. Because that's not uh, part of, of this discussion. It's, okay. Uh, it's, we have to look at the Trinity more in a context what was it and how has it happened that Christians accepted it. Okay. Well, Christians accepted it in the fourth century because that was a uh, Roman uh, uh, edict to, to implant that religion as part of the Christianity. Okay. It has nothing to do with bishops of, of uh, Christians. All right, that's fair enough. Yeah, that's fair enough. Okay. Um, all right, I'll move on to the next bit then, because mm -hmm. it should all get sort of unpacked. Um, like, so, 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 mm -hmm. as I say, I'm just doing it sort of step by step, but yeah, that's, that's fair enough. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to do it like this, because I thought, yes, okay. Okay. Um, the, the way we've come to know of this doctrine is through teaching of the Bible. Uh, throughout the New Testament in particular, three truths become readily apparent, and they are as follows. There's, number one, there is only one God. Number two, uh, three persons are described as God. And three, the three persons are distinct from each other. Uh, these three statements describe the triunity. Um, and we should look into how the Bible presents this information to us, but first it may help to clarify some of the common misunderstandings of what the doctrine is. Uh, the doctrine of the Trinity is a combination of the three statements above. So if a belief is not all three of these together, then it's not the triunity and it's considered a false teaching. So if we were to remove the third statement, we would just be left with number one, there is only one God, and two, three persons are described as God. So these two statements, when they're taken alone, they don't represent the triunity. Uh, those two on their own, they would describe something called modalism, where, for example, God at some point in time ceases to be the Father and becomes the Word, and then changes back at will. Uh, so this can be compared to a human male who, he, while he's at home, he's in the role of the father to his family, but when he's at work, he's the role of the doctor. Um, the simple reason to reject this doctrine of modalism is that we often read about interactions between the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, um, and this could not happen if one person was switching between the roles. So I've got a, a couple of scriptures there, which I think you might you might already know from the top of your head. But, um, I think the Matthew one is the the, the prayer, the baptism formula. Um. Three. Mm -hmm. I, um, yeah, I can, I can read it if you like. Um, so after being baptized, Jesus immediately came up from the water and look, the heavens were opened up and he saw God's spirit descending like a dove and com coming upon him. So, so just, yeah, just in this one, you've got all three persons there. You've got Jesus, the Father and the Holy Spirit. So they can't be one at a time. They will have to be at the same time. So, um, well, first, uh, he didn't see God. 
It's not what the scripture says. He saw God's spirit. God's spirit. Uh -huh. uh, but God's yeah. spirit, is it referred to it as a person or as a thing? Not in this particular verse, no. no. Uh, this, um, um, this, um, this one, you could, well, you cannot possibly uh, argue that or uh, argue the point that the God's spirit is a person. So that his sense could be a thing. Okay, yeah. From and that's what, no, no, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. So here we are uh, talking about uh, Jesus. And yeah. he was, uh, uh, he received the God's uh, Holy Spirit as a sign of, of appointment by God. That's yeah. true. Yeah. There is, uh, no, there are not three persons here. There is definitely one person, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And okay. for me, so far, a thing, yeah. God's Spirit, descending on him as a sign of approval in a, in a form of, of a dove. Yeah. That's, uh, that's what is shown. That's okay. fine. So that's, yeah. it's, it's uh, great. Because that's one of the things that uh, I found that in, New Testament, as so in the Greek scriptures, uh, Holy Spirit is mostly, if not exclusively, referred to as a thing, not, not as a person. Okay. So let's look at that when we are going through the scriptures that yeah. we are referring to, because uh, you, okay. you are well prepared, I, I like your preparation. So yes, we have here the Jesus uh, baptism. Yeah, so the, the only point I'm trying to make there is that yeah, as you said, Jesus is mm -hmm. one thing and the Spirit is another thing. Then no, no, and yeah. that's yeah we, yeah, we never dispute that. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, also when we're looking at 17, we can see that's what you are saying. Uh, the voice from heaven saying, This is my son, who oh, I yeah, have approved. Yeah, so, so that's that, there's the that definitely shows complete separation. So, yeah. uh, of the, the unity between uh, Jesus and, and his father, that's I don't think uh, you ever disputed that, did you? Or we discussed mm. that there was no unity. No, that's no. what Jesus said. I do what my father told mm. me, tells me to do. Yeah. I do only what I observe my father doing. That's okay. the unity. It's definitely, the, that's a very, a very good find of, from the scriptures. Because it's nice that you noticed here the, the modalism. Uh, because some people, exactly that's what they think the yeah. unity is. Yeah. Uh, no. No, okay. And that's, that's a yeah. good spot, a well, well, yeah. good, good research, well done. done Alright, so yeah, one. that was the question yeah. there, why do we reject modalism, but yeah, you yeah. understand that. So, um, I think, yeah, this, the other two passages are the same thing, where it's just showing that they're separate persons, yeah. so we don't, we don't need to look at they, they are they're separate, yes. So yeah. Okay, so we can, we can skip ahead a yeah. little bit. <laughs> yeah. So why do we reject? Modalism, so yeah, yeah that's what... No, we do reject. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, yeah. on, no, okay. I don't want to steal your soul. Oh, no, no, sorry. Well, yeah, no, fine, fine mm -hmm. if you want to talk about it. It's, but yeah, we're all on the same page there, mm -hmm. so that's right, and we don't need to sort of linger on it. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, if we were to remo remove the first statement from those three, yeah. we'd be left with two. Three persons are described as God, and three the three persons are distinct from each other. This doctrine is known as polytheism, or more simply, the belief in many gods. And you'll be hard pressed to find any Christians who believe there's more than one God, as the Bible could hardly be clearer that Jehovah alone is God. So again, there's a couple of scriptures mm. there, but I don't think well, you're going to dispute. Well, that's that. a simple good <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's, uh, mm, our okay. understanding of scriptures is definitely mm. perfectly in line. Yeah. Okay, so we all, yeah we reject polytheism. Yeah. So, so it's, that's the, the what I'm trying to make clear here mm. is that tr the Trinity is all three of those. It's not it's not two. It's so one. Yeah, so we've all, we're on the same page so far. I think that, and yeah, all, mm. um, if we were to remove the second statement. We will be left with one, there is only one God, and three, the three persons are distinct from each other. Uh, these two statements go some way to describe a doctrine known as Arianism. Arianism denies that Jesus or the Holy Spirit are described as God, but are at best subordinate divine beings. Uh, the view was first proposed by Arius, a priest in Alexandria in the 4th century, but was denounced by the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, who affirmed the Trinity. They referred to Jesus as God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, not created, and one in essence with the Father. The view of the council was that the doctrine of the Trinity had been passed down to them from the earliest disciples through the Church Fathers. In the second century, Tertullian wrote, Unity in Trinity, interrelating the three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are three, not in dignity, but in degree, not in substance, but in form, not in power, but in kind. They are of one substance and power, because there is one God from whom these degrees, forms, and kinds devolve in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, from Adversus mm -hmm. Praxian. Uh, Irenaeus, who was a student of Polycarp, who himself was a student of John the Apostle, wrote, To Christ Jesus, our Lord and God and Saviour and King, according to the will of the Invisible Father, every knee should bow against heresies. In the first century, Ignatius of Antioch wrote, 
There is one physician who is possessed both of flesh and spirit, both made and not made, God existing in flesh, true life in death, both of Mary and of God, first possible and then impossible, even Jesus Christ our Lord in his epistle to the Ephesians. So um, the question there is, did Tertullian, Irenaeus, Ignatius and the Council of Nicaea believe that Jesus was God? The Council of Nicaea does exactly what they uh assumed that's what they instituted for for the christianity yeah so they they, they kind of put the stamp on yeah, it but that's yeah if it was true or false it didn't matter because that's what they made of official teaching of christian yeah. christianity going forward yes. yeah so, so no that's exactly yeah. what what's happened yeah so that, yeah they they uh, yeah i'm not i'm not saying mm -hmm. it's like they said it yeah. therefore it's right i'm just saying that's yeah, what, yeah no that, yeah. that's yeah, yeah. That's, that's true yeah um, and so i think that's also the dates are i think that's I haven't prepared for that for, for, for a while, but yeah, that sort of rings the bell, so that's okay. for 4th century indeed. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, it's, uh, so, so, um, okay, move on, move on again. Uh, despite it having been condemned as a heresy soon after it was first proposed, there are a number of groups who hold the Arian belief today. But we shall go on to see what the Bible tells us. Could it be that the Council of Nicaea got it wrong? Um, and so we've got what the Bible teaches. Again, Jehovah is the only God. I think we're all yeah. that's fine. Uh, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit interact with each other, and that's that's, that's straightforward again. Mm -hmm. So we don't, don't really need to check mm -hmm. all of those. Um, okay. Uh, does the Trinity make sense? Um, one of the issues that many people have with the doctrine of the triunity is that it is very difficult to understand. In and of itself, this is very true. It is extremely hard to fully grasp the concept of three persons in one essence and even more troublesome to explain it. However, although the doctrine itself is not easy to explain or comprehend, it's probably one of the cats, <laughs> um, it does make sense of what the Bible teaches us, as well as a number of logical issues to do with the nature of God. For instance, Jesus is very often referred to as the Son of God, or indeed the Son of the Father, um, those yeah. verses there. When a human has a son, that son is also a human. When a cat has a son, that mm -hmm. son is also a cat. Therefore, if God has a son, that son should be God. We know from the Old Testament that Jeho Jehovah alone is God. We also know that the description of Jehovah is that he is eternal, uh, Genesis, without an equal, Isaiah, and perfect in Deuteronomy. Just so. for the sake of a question. Okay. So, I don't think here that God has only one son. Is that what uh, you're trying to, to uh, discuss here? Uh, he's only got. Well, we'll get it again. We'll get to it later. But it's about the, the one begotten son, the one. Mm. There's only one begotten. Mm. Does it mean what? What about? Because we are saying if I have a child, I have only one child. So that's yeah. But if yeah. I had more children, all my children will be of my kind. Yeah. So if God has more children, are they of his kind or not his kind? Um, if are he, they on the same level or not? If he had, if he had more in the same ways, like because they always always say Jesus is the only begotten, so he's kind of yeah. got that in uniqueness yeah. to him. Mm -hmm. So if they were, if he had more sons in that same way, yeah. then they would all be. But when he talks about angels and humans, it's always like a different way. So it's like he's created us out of the dust, and it's kind of well, it's like the way yeah, for the humans yeah. we can yeah, like, because yeah. we are not in the nature, we are in the likeness of God. That, yeah. that is true. We can, uh, but there's also we are talking about some people getting uh, being adopted as God's son, and then uh, being uh, transferred into a heaven realm as a new creation, complete something new, not angels, something new. Uh, okay. So they will become and uh, and they are referred to as God's sons too, mm -hmm. and that's uh, Jesus uh, co-rulers in, in the in the heavenly government. So. I think there is a different for because I just want to clarify that I would talk yeah. about different degrees of uh, uh, being children of, of God or is it as the, the it, what it might appear here if God has a let's say heavenly children like God uh, and then he created others so like cherubs and seraphs and angels so is there a difference between those and Jesus or is they are in the, in the same likeness yeah I think I think there's difference which mm -hmm. is um I, mean, I, th I think with with Jesus he's the one and only son real yeah. son whereas everyone else is kind of metaphorically a son in a sense like he's created us so like yeah. as, as, like how how Frankenstein calls his monster the son even though he didn't it wasn't like mm -hmm. a birth thing he made him out of 
bits and pieces and so he kind of is the father it's kind of it's not really a biological mm. father or anything but it's it's a metaphor for it but mm. like rather than an actual yeah. son that he had with a mother or in like the normal way um no, we can discuss that we think about that everything is well really it really when you really want to think about it we are all part of god yeah because he created everything out of his own energy yeah so that's how physical universe appeared so yeah. what we know that's the nuclear bomb coming out so there is yeah. a little matter making great energy yeah so god could have done something completely opposite so was some of his massive enormous energy to make convert into the matter so it means everything was created is part of him yeah, I so think we can, that, yeah. you might think about that. Yeah, and the, the same we are talking about the heavenly uh, the creatures. So the spiritual realm, when uh, Jesus was first created by God, so part of God, yeah, he transferred his some of his energy into new creation. Okay, and then that's what uh, scriptures. Do you discuss the scripture that everything was created through him and mm. for him? Okay. Yeah, so that's what uh, uh, Jesus was. Then the as the Bible say, master worker, someone who God say, and then, then Jesus was creating under God's guidance, but using God's energy. So everything really, if you really want to uh, paint your mind, we are part of the same energy coming from the same yeah, God. Yeah, no, I believe that. Yeah. So that's uh, and, well, that's. Uh, only begotten son that's that's a, that's a major difference and i think yeah. that we can agree with that yeah that's, that's exactly what the bible says mm. okay. So, yeah. <laughs> okay um so yeah the question here is what are some of the attributes that make jehovah unique so again it's sort of, uh, the, it's yeah. just the ones listed there basically is like eternal yeah. no equal yeah. perfect um and yeah that's the thing that's well God knows our limitations. Yeah, we cannot understand eternal. No, because yeah. for we all have. I think I'm sure that's I know it's uh, my. Well, I hope it's not only my imagination. Well, like the world before I was born, it could not even exist. It doesn't matter for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because what does it matter for 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 any of us? And that's what we only understand beginning and. Well, we don't, we cannot reconcile death because we are not created to die, we are created to live forever. But uh, we cannot imagine something that never, or someone that never had a beginning. Because mm. even like we talk about, the scientists talk about universe, there's an age of universe, it's not no, yeah, the eternal the, thing. Yeah, the universe, the universe appeared yeah. at, at some stage. Even, yeah. let's say it's like they, they think it's 10 billion times, fine, it's 10 billion years, fine. Even if they are true, it's still they still beginning yeah final of the amount of, of, of years but that's uh, yeah that thing they could god knows how limitations but he he decided to uh, show in the scriptures i don't have a beginning i will not have an end mm. yeah just to let to yeah. tell us that that is the case even yeah. if we don't understand yeah. it beyond yeah. their comprehension yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. okay um so okay uh i'll move on again yeah. uh now if god had a son who began to exist at a certain point in time then he would not be eternal, so he would not be God's equal, and so he would not be perfect. If God's son was none of these things, he would not be God. And this is exactly what Arianists believe. Mm -hmm. uh, if God's son is not God, then Jehovah being the father of Jesus could be compared to a human becoming father to a cat. God as creator of all things, of course, uh, a couple of verses in Isaiah, was the original designer of humans and cats alike, but Jesus is described as being begotten, not made, John 3.16. Oh, John 3.16 refers to Jesus as God's only begotten son. The Greek word for begotten in this passage is uh, monohines. We will see more about the word begotten later, but here we can see that the choice to use the phrase only begotten is designed to contrast with the words created in, from the Greek ksizo uh, or made from the Greek poia. Uh, I don't know if I said that right, uh, used for the world and humankind. So um, I think uh, Ktizo is in Matthew 19.4 and uh, Poirier is in Colossians 1.16 and it's, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's talking about the world and humans, whereas it always uses uh, Monoyenes for Jesus. Um, so here, probably in the discussion, you will see that's where our paths will diverge because uh, our understanding, what we find in the scriptures, or the scriptures for us, more uh, confirm what uh, you're referring to, what the Arianists believe. So, for us, Jesus is not Almighty God. Okay. Uh, the Bible refers to him as a God, so it does to uh, angels, and so it does to powerful human beings. 
it does refer to Satan as a god. So calling someone a god does not constitute calling him an almighty god. god. Yeah, that's yeah. what we uh, believe. That that's only uh, relates to Jehovah God. And the point with creation, that's what I want to discuss earlier. I didn't see this point uh, earlier. Jehovah can create things uh, like a human becoming father to a cat. It doesn't work like this because Jehovah creates what he wants. To yeah, create. so he could create. He created Jesus as his first creation, the beginning of his creation. And that's what it's only begotten. The Bible yeah. says the rest of the things was created for him. Mm. Mm. That's true. Okay. There in Colossians one sixteen. Yeah. yeah. What you've actually put yourself. Yeah. So that's yeah. Uh, creating and saying that everything else was created for him and through him means that he was created. Okay. Why you, can you give me something that I own? Can I give you something that? No. 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 So why would uh, God create things for Jesus? For him. Um, if he owns it. I, well, yeah, this kind of goes back to we've got the three persons, so it's all the Father giving yeah. to the Son. But so. if they are in the same in the position, they all the same things. Why? Um, Jesus could yeah. God. Mm. Jesus cannot give anything to God except his allegiance and loyalty that to to his uh, heavenly Father okay. and the Almighty God. Yeah. Um, so we cannot give things to God. No, it's like no, he has it all if you want to, yeah. like you refer to the Frankenstein, uh, you need to create something. No, we cannot even create anything because everything was created by God. So even yeah. if you start from nothing, mm. this nothing, the dust, okay. because now you create your own dust. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you can't. So yeah. that's uh, the creation for me. That's the, the whole thing. Uh, well, that, that's our reasons why we would be more, much more inclined to follow this. That they are not the same in rank. Okay. Jesus, definitely what you pointed out, he is very special. Yeah. There is nobody else like Jesus. We cannot say that Jesus is the same as other angels. No. No, that's, uh, that's uh, never, the Bible never ever really referred to it. Jesus was always in a very special p position. He was, he was always more important. He was uh, always uh, in a favorite position. He had always direct access to God. That's what we believe other angels yeah. might not necessarily have. But for us, does not that's the that in itself does not constitute that he was equal to God. Okay. He's as eternal. But we can continue with your with your reasoning, but that's okay. to, to see that's why yeah. we uh, see the scriptures uh, pointing slightly different. But let's yeah, no, on. that's right. Yeah, because I like that's what it's what you're here for, yeah. so I can understand yeah. where yeah. where you are. So yeah. it's not. Yeah, it's mm. fine. Um, so yeah, with with the father to a cat thing, it was not so. It was just sort of drawing the distinction between if you give birth naturally, yeah. you're always going to have a human, yeah. but on on the assumption that you can mm -hmm. make a Frankenstein, then the Frankenstein is not really your son, but you can call it your son. Yeah. It's but that's, oh, that's yeah, fine. yeah. That's, I'm not that, 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 yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry if it's just uh, like picking on you know, it no, 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 it's fine. It's, it's, it's all right. like no, no, I'm not offended. Don't worry, it's fine. It's um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah, the question there is who created all things. So uh, you've said you said that already. It was it was God, uh, and okay. Um, that's that's what scriptures are. That's, it was God's power. Uh -huh. that Jesus was the one that was making things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Because that's uh, that's it was Colossians one sixteen. Yes. Uh, Colossians yeah. one. Yeah. That's yeah. A good so yeah, it's probably good. It is probably a good idea to check them because I'm sure I put them in for a reason. But <laughs> uh, but yeah, you did already. So it's that saying. That's exactly what you were saying. That by uh, means in all things were created. By Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'll move on then. Uh, we've got that. Uh, in Hebrews eleven seventeen, we see the phrase "only begotten" or "monoyenes" appears again. However, in this instance, it describes Isaac as the only begotten of Abraham. Uh, we know that Isaac was in fact Abraham's second son after Ishmael from Genesis sixteen six and Genesis twelve five, um, because we know that Isaac was born to Abra Abraham and not created by him, and we also know that Isaac had a special relationship with his father that Ishmael did not have. We can see that Manohianes has a very particular meaning. Uh, the word monoyenes comes from the Greek root words monos, which means only, and genos, which means kind. So the most accurate meaning would be something like one of a kind. 
So just as Isaac could accurately be described as a one of a kind son to Abraham, Jesus is also described as a one of a kind son to Jehovah. Uh, some have said that the root word is not genos, but rather geneo, which means born. However, as we've seen, this translation does not fit with Abraham's story, because A Isaac is not Abraham's only born son. So um, the question there is, what does monohianes mm -hmm. mean? Um, so would that, in, because the, as, 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 as the point you said, Isaac was, uh, strictly speaking, second son. But uh, would that not mean that it's uh, the only begotten in the terms of the rights of a child, of a first first? Yeah, it could mean that, yeah. Because uh, although Ishmael was the older one, he was not a son of his wife. Yeah, so he was a son of his yeah. slave girl. Yeah. So that's why, as I can, that would be point exactly to what you reasoned before, that Isaac was in a favorite position yeah. by his birthright. Yeah. So being uh, a child of a uh, of his uh, married wife and the legal wife, that uh, put Isaac in a special position. Yeah. Although there was someone else before, but he did not have the same level, the same position. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I think that's there is nothing here that I would. Uh, I would be discussing because that makes uh, perfect sense. That's, yeah, yes, exactly. It, it yeah. might, re it should refer to a very special position. Yeah, yeah. So this, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah it could be that. As, yeah, it's, it's the same kind of thing. Very mm. special position. Yeah. Mm. So that 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 works for me. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, Okay, as Jesus is God's one-of-a-kind son, or son in a special position, he was begotten, not created, it makes sense that these two persons are of the same essence. It could be said by way of analogy that they are of the same species and that each member of the species, God, has the attributes of being eternal, unique and perfect. Of course, humans and angels are sometimes referred to as sons of God. However, Jesus' position as only begotten or one-of-a-kind or special relationship mm -hmm. certainly sets him apart from any other being is something truly unique. Uh, so the question is, who is the unique son? Yeah, um, that's just, and that's exactly yeah. the, the conclusion we, we drew. Agree, yeah? So yeah. we are definitely in sync here. Okay. And I think that's what uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, yes, we definitely talk about Jehovah as an almighty God, and that's the only person that we are going to worship. Yeah. But Jesus has always been a very special yeah okay and ever since uh, he came to earth and died for us and bought humankind for himself as his own position he's our lord yes that's mm -hmm. we uh well he bought us so if we want to live we need to give him obedience because he's our king so that's and he is definitely in jehovah's arrangement he's always been special yeah and for us he is even much more so as because of the, our yeah. father okay mm. so that's what uh Apostle paul was referring to he's not the second adam okay we don't have our father anymore adam is no more he yeah. will never live yeah but that's when jesus uh, swapped places or replaced adam and he became the father to the human family in a legal term as well so right. really if uh, like you have a father and you have this expectation of your particular behavior towards your father you to respect him mm. That's what uh, is expected of all of us toward Jesus, because mm -hmm. he is now our okay. Father. So yeah. we definitely are in, in, in agreement with this one. He is definitely unique. Okay, brilliant. So, okay. No? so yeah, it's pretty much... So pretty like the research, possible. and that's exactly what all monogenes or monogenes, whatever they're living. <laughs> yeah, I should know better because I'm half Greek, but... <laughs> <laughs> I, kept quite, I didn't yeah. say that. <laughs> I kept quiet about that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> I thought magic was really clever, so I thought I won't say. Oh, we got that's some new messages. Oh, all right, it? okay. Um, all right, I'll move on then. Um, other aspects of God's nature brings us to a second problem with not accepting the triunity doctrine. God is the embodiment of love. Well, 1 John 4 8. Mm -hmm. uh, God is also self sufficient, Acts 17 24, mm -hmm. uh, which means he needs nothing. He has everything he needs within himself. Any non Trinitarian type of monotheism, this makes for a contradiction. 
If God is a being of love, then he would need someone to express that love to, and also someone to receive love from, or else he would suffer frustration from missing another person to share their loving nature with. Uh, the doctrine of the triunity allows God to have a loving relationship within the three persons of the Godhead without any need for any extra beings outside of himself. Uh, a monotheism that does not have three or even two divine persons within a Godhead would therefore need something and so would not be self-sufficient and God would have to create another being before he could express and satisfy his loving nature. He would need there to always be at least one other being in existence to be complete. Um, so the, the question there is, if God is self-sufficient, would he ever need anything outside of himself? He wouldn't. That's, right. That's what self-sufficient means. If I'm still sufficient, I don't need anything else. Right, yeah. I can give, because that's uh, what, uh, how we uh, understand the Jehovah's embodiment of love. Jehovah, he is happiest by himself. And that's again, that's probably the second thing we cannot understand. Because we are not created mm. to be able to live by ourselves only, yeah. alone. So that's, we are s somewhat not the same, or uh, no, no other creature is, like, like God. We are, yeah. nobody else is totally self-sufficient. But uh, he enjoys the existence and, and life, and that's why he intended to start creating too. So other creatures can also enjoy this, uh, what uh, he owns. So for me, being self-sufficient means I'm self-sufficient. Yeah, okay. I don't need anyone else. No, okay. So, so, um, so yeah, so I say that, that makes sense with the triunity, but um, I'm not I'm not sure how that makes sense without it. But I, th I think I'm sort of getting to that a bit later. Okay, so let's um, see what we'll say. I guess yeah. So far, uh, that's that's where I'm saying there will be a probably as expected there will be paths when we will diverge. Mm. But yeah. let's hopefully we'll we'll find some common ground uh, later in, in the explanation. Okay. <laughs> um, even though the triunity may seem to be a confusing doctrine, we can see that it makes sense of God's unique nature. In, in Isaiah 55, 9, God declares, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So we should not be surprised if our limited minds are not fully capable of understanding God and his infinite and eternal being. Um, Conquer. Well, that's, okay. mm. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Okay. That's we wholeheartedly uh, agree. That's no, mm. we don't understand Jehovah. Well, we only know about God what He uh, inclined to reveal about Himself yeah, in the Bible. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. So. And it also said that Jehovah's ways are past tracing out. Yeah. So it's the same Which sort of. Should be. If we yeah. live forever, we wouldn't want never to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Never get well, there. That's when we live, uh, that's Second Peter. Yes, that's angels peering to the scriptures to learn about God. Mm. They can see God. Yeah. They can talk to Him, and they still go to the Bible that was given humans to learn more about God. So, if they, being much superior to us, because I think that's, we can agree that yeah, they are much more powerful. They they are super intelligent in our terms, and they still go to the book that was given to imperfect humans to get reconciled back with God. <coughs> because there is so much about God that. Exactly. And we might yeah. think we know something about him. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, it's a limited, very limited. That's yeah. what, uh, yeah, I think that's what uh, Job said. It's the fringes about his ways. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we use. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay, so the, 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 what the Bible teaches there, and I think we're all on the same, yeah. is Je Jehovah is eternal, without an equal, and he's perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've got, I've got Jehovah created all things alone. Well, uh, but you can, got, that's, it's so true. Yeah. No, yeah. that's it's it's a fantastic thing because Jehovah created. That's he, only he has creative power. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nobody else can create anything. Yeah. But he can. That's why he can pass his Holy Spirit. So his power, some of his power, onto another being to do things your his will. And that's what uh, the scripture revealed. That's what's happened with Jesus. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. The architect and designer of the entire system is Jehovah. Okay. Everything, the universe, the angels, everything was designed by him. Yeah. yeah but in that, his, yeah. like, you have a child, so that's, that's very easy to, to discuss. If you uh, want to have something, so your child will be happy, so you will help, let your child to, like, do a cake. You will do a cake together. Yeah. Well, it's kind of wrong example. <laughs> creation was perfect. Yeah. But that's, that's pretty much what it is. We, I, I will show you how to do things and you do these things. Okay. But so you can say you can create a long creative things. Okay. It's true. 
Yeah. We, we read, it was done, uh, we're using Jesus' hands. It's true. Okay, um, I th it might be worth checking the scripture on that one. Yeah, I've, go I've on. got uh, uh, Isaiah 44, 24, which I think should just sort of sum it up. Mm -hmm. um, Okay. So uh, we've got 44, 24. Mm -hmm. This is what Jehovah says, you're a purchaser who formed you since you were in the womb. I am Jehovah who made everything. I stretched out the heavens by myself and I spread out the earth who was with me. So I, th I think that just sums it up that he, he was alone yeah. doing that. Yeah. He, he didn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, that's so yeah. 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 definitely true. Um, Okay, so we'll move on. Then. Uh, Jehovah, Jesus is Jehovah's one of a kind son. That's that's all right. And Jeho Jehovah is self sufficient, and that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, so is is Jesus God then? Uh, the question of Jesus's identity is central to any Christian th theology. Trinitarians believe that Jesus is God incarnate, and so the infinite value of his life covers the uncountable sins of all mortal humans. Others believe that Jesus was a man who lived a perfect life, and his sacrifice simply repaid the balance against the sin of the first man, Adam, who caused the fall of mankind. God's word is our ultimate authority on the truth about Jesus, and so we must trust it to inform our own knowledge and beliefs. It has been preserved for us as the Holy Bible. Other than God himself, there is nothing we should trust more than his Bible. Um, so the question there, what's the ultimate authority on, on the truth? It is the Bible. Yeah. 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 Okay, um, so yeah, it's very straightforward. So. Um, the New Testament is where we discover most of our information about Jesus. While the Old Testament contains several prophecies about the coming Messiah, the, the New Testament Gospels are historical accounts of his life and teachings according to his disciples, while the epistles offer some further information about him and what he taught. Within them, we see that Jesus had several conversations with Jewish leaders and authorities who opposed him. In Mark 2, 5-7, Jesus forgave the sin of a paralysed man, and as he did so, the Jewish scribes remarked that only God has the right to do that. A number of events like this, including in John 5, 16 to 18, John 8, 58, 59, and John 10, 30, 33, mm -hmm. caused the Jewish leaders to believe that Jesus was claiming to be equal to God. In some cases, they reacted violent, violently and tried to kill him. Um, and so, yeah, the question there is, what did the Pharisees and other Jewish leaders think Jesus was claiming to be? Well, they thought that he was claiming that he was a God, that's true. Okay. Um, uh, so this raises some questions again. If Jesus was not God, but a perfect man, would he intentionally deceive the Jews to make him think that he was equal to God? Or would he behave in a way that would not cause them to react with anger and violence? Uh, Jesus' death on the cross was handed to him on the charge of blasphemy. Um, according to Leviticus 24.16, the abuser of Jehovah's name shall be put to death without fail. So the strict Jewish leaders, uh, Jesus' blasphemy against God himself meant that he deserved the death penalty. To a Trinitarian, the reading of these passages is that Jesus rightfully said that he was God and equal to the Father. The Jewish leaders who did not believe it became angry and wrongfully executed him for blaspheming against Jehovah. The only reading for this, for someone who does not believe that Jesus was God, is that Jesus allowed the Jews to be deceived in order to get himself crucified. It would seem that the perfect man who lies is something of a contradiction. That's in 1 Peter 2, mm -hmm. 21. Um, so uh, the question there is, can Jesus lie? No, he can't lie. Absolutely. But uh, I'm looking at this, this passage because you are saying that Jesus was claiming that he was God and for that he was uh, put to death. In Matthew 26, 63, he said, I put you under oath by the living God to tell us whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. He said to him, you yourself said it. That means, yes, I am. Uh, he was not uh, accused of being God. He was accused by Jews as being the Son of God. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's because that's what they were <laughs> accusing him. That, that yes, are you saying that you are from the heavenly realm? And yeah. uh, Jesus said, "Yeah, you have said it." Said yes. That that was. Uh, okay. So his blasphemy was like, like calling himself an angel or something. Yeah. Different. Son of God. Yeah. So okay. So that he was not just just a uh, mere human. That and that's uh, what we are reading here, here in the scripture. Okay. Is that 
I, I'm not sure. Is that um, something in anywhere in scripture? It's like if you say if you claim to be an angel or something, then that's blasphemy. Or I don't know. I have never, never seen that scripture. Okay. But for them, it said uh, that was sufficient uh, for, for him to claim that he was a Christ, the Son of God. Okay. Um, well, I, th I think maybe uh, possibly. Oh, well, th well, this bit is only about that they're, they're charging him with blasphemy, yeah. so I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah so no, that, that's good. Yeah. There's, if there's more, that's fine. But, yeah. Um, uh, because we would end with him, yes. Yes, yes. Um, I'm not sure if those those passages. We can check them if you like, but I'm not sure if any of those are. Particularly no, I think that that will confirm yeah. pretty much the same what we read yeah. here. So yeah. that's because uh, Jesus never claimed to be God. Okay. He that was uh, he didn't never utter such words. I am Almighty. Okay. Um, all right. So we, we'll go on from there then. Um, uh, Jesus was executed by the Jewish Sanhedrin, the leaders, uh, charged with the blasphemy of claiming to be equal with God. Either Jesus truly was equal to God and the Sanhedrin were mistaken, or Jesus was not equal to God and the Sanhedrin executed him justly according to their laws because he claimed to be so. Could it really be the case that Jesus deceived the Sanhedrin? Uh, Jesus cannot lie. He is the truth. John 14, 6. He explains in Matthew 13, 10 to 15 that those who do not understand him are ones who are closed minded un and unwilling to hear anything that doesn't match with what they already believe. Uh, he uses parables and illustrations to tell the truth, but only those with open minds and heart hearts will grasp what he is saying. He does not lie. So if people believe the wrong things about him, it is because of their own presumptions. Uh, and so we see the conundrum. Either one, Jesus truly is equal to God, and the Sanhedrin refused to believe it and had him executed. And two, Jesus led the Sanhedrin to believe that he was claiming to be equal to God when he was not, and they justly executed him for blasphemy. For option two to be correct, Jesus would have had to have said something that was completely true, but that he also knew the Sanhedrin would twist the meaning of, and then take it to be blasphemous and false. So he would be using truth as a form of deception. But we know from 1 Peter 2.22 that deception was not found in his mouth. In this case, then, it would seem that option two is completely out of the question. Um, so you know, the question there is, would Jesus intentionally deceive anybody? Well, no, of course not. Uh, he was the the truth, and he knew exactly what uh, uh, what was going to happen. Yeah, he knew that that was exactly the day he would be put to death. That's uh, he knew why he came to this earth. But as discussed before, the first part is not Jesus truly equal God, because that that was not even a question. Jews in those days they did not believe in Trinity. They knew there is only one God. Yeah, there is one God. Yeah. Um, and uh, Jesus would not uh, would not say well, he didn't believe that either because that's actually the the, the Bible teaching that that was the, the truth as understood by by them. He never claimed to be God. He he claimed that he was son of God and he claimed he was special. Okay, that's what he said. He would be on the right hand of God, and that's uh, with the power. Yeah. So that's what he that's exactly what he was claiming, and that's uh, he didn't try to twist on deceive anyone. Okay. He said that's uh, that's exactly who I am. Okay, but I am the Christ. Yeah. But you do, uh, the, you do get that the Sanhedrin thought he was saying he was equal to God. No. As, uh, we, then, um, so we've got, I think we, did, we didn't look at the passages, but it was, uh, I think it was, so it was, we've got, um, so yeah, Mark 2, 5 to 7 is where they say God, only God has the right to forgive sins. So that's sort of, he's putting, so we've got, and then there's a couple of other ones, other ones in John. I can just pull out, try pulling out one of those. So I've got John 5. Yeah. 16 to 18. I can't remember which one's which, so I don't know. That's fine. Oh, that's um, fine. So, so we are looking at John uh, 5, 16 to 18. Oh, yeah, this is a, this is a, we only need this one. Don't need to look at all of them. Mm -hmm. um, for this reason, the Jews were persecuting Jesus because he was doing these things during the Sabbath. But he answered them, My father has kept working until now, and I keep working. This is why the Jews began seeking all the more to kill him, because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was calling God his own father, making himself equal to God. Mm -hmm. So, at least for the Sanhedrin, for the Jews, they're, they're seeing it that Jesus is calling himself equal to God. That's what uh, they did claim, but is that what Jesus was claiming? Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the question, is that whatever jesus has done it's led them to believe he's saying he's equal to god and that's where i'm thinking could we look at philippians 2 5 6. uh yeah because well, that's what jesus because yes he did forgive sins because as he said 
all the judgment was given to him. In Philippians 2, 5, 6, we will read something about the God, uh, Jesus' uh, mental attitude. 2, 5, and 6. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I've gone to fill it then, so. Philippians 2, Philippians. 5 and 6. Mm -hmm. Keep this mental attitude in you that was also in Christ Jesus, who although he was existing in God's form, gave no consideration to a seizure, namely that he should be equal to God. Yeah, so this is, um, I mean, this is about the, I think I'll come to, I think I'll talk about this a bit later as well, but it's, it's about uh, Jesus um, sort of giving up his divinity for a while. Um, that was before. Sorry? That was before, that was when he was in heaven. Yeah, so he, he had the divinity and then he gave up that to no, become a man. he gave no consideration to a seizure. Why would that be called a seizure? Is that something of that he was? It was... Um, seizure is a theft, right? A seizure is a theft. Uh, it could Why be. would claiming to be equal to God for Jesus means that he became like Satan? Because that's what Satan claimed. Okay, because um, I'm not sure if that's the um, what that means. But, uh, because uh, where I've read it is that he is equal to God and he didn't feel any need to sort of cling on to that or to, st I, th I think the word seizure kind of... He was in God's form, mm -hmm. that's what the scripture said, yeah. so he was not almighty, he's not what it said. Because there was a creature in heaven that actually uh, wanted to have higher position that he deserved and that yes, he, Satan, became Satan, yeah. he became Satan. And this, uh, the Apostle Paul is writing here keep the same mental, mental as you as Jesus okay. because for him he knew his position he knew where he stands uh, regarding to yeah. Almighty God yeah for him that would be for Jesus trying to claim to be equal to God would be following the footsteps of, of uh, okay. Satan because so, that would be yeah. something that he does not uh, own okay so I take that's how you'd interpret that verse then okay mm -hmm. um, so, according to this verse, Jesus is, he wouldn't claim to be equal, but this is still the question of the, the Jews thought he was claiming to be equal, and equal? there's kind or of something that's weird going on there. For them, that was something what they thought only God had the right to do. Yeah. Did Jews in the first century understand who Messiah really was? Um, I think there's a mixture, some maybe, some, a lot of them not, like the leaders yeah. probably not. Um, probably not. Yeah. So that's, did they expect that Jesus would be the one who would become the king of the earth and would be judging all the humans? Um, again, the, the leaders not, and, no, and even yeah. Judas yeah. not, and um, a lot yeah. of close people to him yeah. not, but there, there was a few that did get it. No, but, of um, course, yeah. there, there would be, there, yeah. there, there, as, as nowadays also, there are some people that uh, understand, some people yeah. that uh, so no, but okay, that's, yeah. I agree, that he could have been accused for that uh, Jesus never said that that's uh, well, maybe that's another question has Jesus ever explicitly said I am almighty God um, well, I, I think, am equal yeah. to God I think there are a few passages that do say that. Okay, um, so let's, let's get to them uh, yeah. when, because I think it, it might be somewhere in, in the yeah. there, so I will not be. Okay, but yeah, I just wanted to put that sort of question yeah. out there, is that, okay, it, the, the assumption is he wouldn't claim to be equal, but some, somehow something he's done has led the Jews to believe that he's saying he's equal, so it seems like there's a some sort of deception going on there, but... Um, Did Jesus clarify every single misconception that Jews have in the first century? Um, well, probably not again, mm. no. Okay, yeah, all right. Um, he did say I'm going to my God and your God, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, okay, so, uh, all right. Um, according to Old Testament prophecies, it would seem that the Trinitarian reading makes more sense of these claims. Isaiah 9 6, for example, reads For a child has been born to us, his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. But this verse is an obvious reference to Jesus and is very clear from a Trinitarian point of view. But for those who deny the triunity, it raises problems. Would a created being re be referred to as eternal and would a perfect man be called God? Some Old Test Testament passages are used in a similar way to tell us who Jesus really is. Psalm 102 is a prayer to Jehovah which speaks of his immortality compared to the mortality of mankind. Uh, read Psalm 102, 24-7 here. Um, 
I said, oh my God, do not do away with me in the middle of my life. You whose years span all generations. Long ago you laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens of the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. Just like a garment, they will all wear out. Just like clothing, you will replace them and they will pass away. But you are the same and your years will never end. Um, so yeah, the question there is, uh, who, who is Psalm 102 talking about when it says they laid the foundations of the earth and will never perish? Sorry, I was looking at the first part for the second. Okay, part. yeah. If you want to yes. say anything about the first, no, no, no. no. Part. no. 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 Uh, talking about the the wonderful Counselor Almighty God, uh, Father, Prince of Peace. Uh, we agree that's coming to Jesus, and we have no uh, problem with our understanding that Jesus is not Almighty. He can be Mighty God. Okay. Can a man be called a God? Not. Um, well, you, you, in a sort of again, it's sort of a metaphorical thing, just saying that they're a powerful person, but it's not actually saying they are the, the divine. Of course not. Yeah, yeah, that's we are d distinguishing two things. There is one. Uh, it is that only one person is called Almighty God. Okay. Nobody else. No, if we yeah. see in the scriptures Almighty God, yeah, that's the person that we are referring to as Jehovah. Yeah. Uh, is Satan called a god in the scriptures? Um, I'd probably with a small g, sort of like. Uh, to, to I don't think I don't know if there was a small or large in the yeah, in the, in the original, original Greek. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, <laughs> that yeah. is our our interpretation. Yeah. But yes, of course, he's yeah. called God of the system of things. Yeah. That he definitely is. Okay. Were angels called gods? Um, yes. There probably was. Time, yeah. yeah. Were uh, so the judges in the Israel? Were they called yeah, gods? Yeah. Some powerful yeah. kings and yeah. yeah. So we can call. So that's uh, of this. All these titles, and that's a, that's a, he's is he becoming eternal father? Yeah, yes. eternal is a, is kind of a bigger. We'll never have an end. Eternal would have been implying no beginning as well, though, wouldn't it? Uh, not necessarily. Someone who lives forever is it a life, a eternal life? Um, I'm being born and I will never die. Do okay. I have eternal life? Um, well, yeah, that's what it says. Yeah, mm -hmm. you get eternal life. Yeah. So okay. for us, that's uh, what means what we lost with Adam will gain with Jesus. Okay. So he will become our eternal father. We'll never have any more father. No. And because of uh, his uh, sacrifice and whatever he's done for us, we can live forever and we can enjoy our conversations forever. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's that one. So that's, and uh, now let's go. Uh, sorry, I just got so. That's all right. No, it's so fine. I need to read the, the same passage. That's okay. Yeah. But yeah, the, so the psalm is uh, who is just saying, who who is this uh, passage about? Who is it referring to? Well, when you talk about Psalms, on those uh, those days they did not even know fully, they did not fully understand that Jesus exists. Okay. So they could not talk about Jesus. Okay. They did not know his name. Well, no. His name was not Jesus, that's for sure. Yes. Yeah. That's given for, so we know him yeah. this way. So it's definitely must be referring to Jehovah. Yeah, so yeah, that I, I think the same as so that psalm is referring to Jehovah. So, but if we go to the yeah. next bit, it's, we find this exact passage posted, uh, quoted in the New Testament book of Hebrews, chapter one. Uh, here it is. For example, to which one of the angels did God ever say, "You are my son; today I have become your father"? But about the son, He says, "God is your throne forever and ever, and the scepter of your kingdom is the scepter of uprightness." Uprightness. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning, O Lord, You laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the works of Your hands. They will perish, but You will remain. And just like a garment, they will all wear out. And You will wrap them up as a cloak, as a garment. They will be changed, but You are the same, and Your years will never come to an end. Um, so the questions here is, who is this now? Who is this quoting, and who is it talking about? I would have to read it. So we can discuss that. But I would yeah, you can look in there, or we can. Uh, okay, let's, let's yeah, it's, let's you see can what I can find. Um, that's Hebrews one, yes. Yeah, because there are a couple of ellipses in there, but mm -hmm. it's just, but it's, it's, I've made sure I haven't changed the meaning mm -hmm. there. So you, you can I'm double sure check it. Yeah. <laughs> So that is it was mm -hmm. he, yeah we've got the note there anyway it's Hebrews one yeah. five mm -hmm. on to twelve. I'll have to do some research on this because I think I missed this bit. Oh. Okay. 
Oh, so if you can come back to that next time. Sure, yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so the, my reading of that is that mm. Paul is quoting Jehovah and Jehovah's talking about Jesus, but it's this passage that it's, it's, it's just a well, like copy and paste from a thing. Well, it is yeah. definitely a quote, yes, but yeah. that's, uh, it's talk about uh, the angels. So, so yes, I, I would be more than happy to do the, the research because uh, okay. I think I would have to for you. Think too long for this. Okay, no, yeah, that's all right. It's still quite a lot. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and you, um, you'll be well, welcome to take that with you at the end of the day as well if you want to see it. Um, so yeah, I've got here writing about Jesus. Uh, Paul quotes Jehovah, who is himself quoting a passage from a psalm which clearly, clearly speaks of God. So if Paul is right, then that means Jesus is Jehovah God. Um, it is of interest to note that in other translations, Hebrews 1.5 is translated as I have begotten you from the Greek uh, Yeenega. Previously, we saw how the word begotten is often translated from the Greek word monoyenes, meaning one of a kind or special relationship. Uh, in many other places, the English translations use the word begotten in place of the Greek word yeyenega. However, monoyenes and yeyenega mean different things. So in this case, the English translations can cause some unnecessary confusion. Um, the Hebrews 1 5 verse is a quote from Psalm 2 7. The only difference being that the Hebrews was written in Greek while the Psalm was written in Hebrew. Um, the word translated to Yenika in from the Hebrew is uh, ilthi, uh, from the root word yalad, and the basic definition of these words is to generate. Um, in Zephaniah 2.2, 2, the word Yalad is translated to mean takes effect and refers to decree. So in this context, the decree generates an effect. Uh, in Job 38.28, Yalad is translated to who fathers or uh, translated to ask who fathers or begets the rain. Um, ob obviously nobody does because it's a naturally generated effect. Or if, if seeing as God is the creator of nature, then it could be fair to say that he generates it. Um, Proverbs 27.1 uses the word yalad to describe the events that a day would bring forth. Uh, the use of the word yalad gives the impression of one thing coming naturally from a first, but with a sense of union. You cannot separate, separate events from a day, and you cannot separate rain from the clouds. As this Hebrew word yalad and the Greek word yayanika mean to generate, it is not entirely accurate to just translate them in a way that suggests birth or fatherhood. The words more accurately describe how a flame begets smoke. Um, as long as the flame exists, it will generate the smoke. In the same way, it is said that God the Father generates the Son. The Son is a separate person, but they share their essence in one being and one entity. Um, so yeah, the question there is just, what do you take uh, Yenika to mean? Well, uh, we cannot... Or, uh, being created or being given firstborn or uh, only begotten, the only words for us to to kind of grasp to, it to, to grasp the relationship. It does not. It has nothing to do how it really happened. So what you are saying about the generation of its uh, an energy or flame because smoke, yes, that all makes perfect sense. Yeah, but that does not constitute uh, that Jehovah created someone who is equal to him. Okay, and some uh, concept or probably um, that's not a concept the fact that Jesus was created makes him not equal yeah it would if yeah if he's created then he's yeah. not equal yeah if uh, if it's whatever we might imagine that's uh, happened so the source of life was coming from Jehovah that was uh, given to to Jesus or whatever the name yeah. he had in heaven back yeah. then but that would imply not they are is Jesus special by all means is he more important than the was in the entire universe by all means does it make him equal no okay yeah i think yeah that's the kind of the crux of it is because that's sort of what we covered earlier is that yeah. if he's created then he's not equal yeah. so yeah okay um uh, we see from these passages a number of ways that Jesus is identified as God. Uh, we've also seen that the Sanhedrin believe that Jesus claimed to be equal to God, and that the church fathers in the following centuries also taught the triunity. We've even seen a quote from Jehovah himself stating that Jesus is God. Uh, it should be no surprise then to find that Jesus' apostles and disciples recognised that Jesus was Jehovah. 
Uh, Paul tells us in Colossians 2.9 that in him all the fullness of the divine quality dwells bodily. Uh, could all the fullness of divinity exist in anybody but God himself? In, in John 20.28, 20, the Apostle Thomas, after receiving proof that Jesus was raised from the dead, calls him my Lord and my God. Uh, Peter 1.1 1, 1 refers to Jesus as God and Saviour. In Acts 2.24, Peter also tells us that it was impossible for Jesus to be held by death, and we know full well that men can die and be lost forever from other verses. Uh, so if Jesus was merely a man, death would have been a possibility. John 1.3 reads, All things came into existence through him, and apart from him, not even one thing came into existence. As we know and have previously seen from Isaiah 44.24, it was Jehovah who created all things. So John clearly identifies Jesus, the word, with Jehovah. So uh, is it possible for a created being to have created all things that were created? Colossians 1.16 says that Sorry? all the things were created through him and for him. Mm. So yeah, that's fine. It's possible. Okay. A creature could create if that was God's will. And as Jesus had a special position, that's what uh, we discussed before, it's definitely possible. It def that's definitely what the, that's definitely mm -hmm. the scripture. So what you're saying here, it's all true. All, th all things mm -hmm. came to existence through him. It's okay. all true. Um, I, just, I just want to look at the, the wording of that one three, though. It says, all things yep. came into existence through him, and apart from him, not even one thing came into existence. So it's, it's saying that there, there's not, not nothing nothing came into existence unless he created it except him well, it doesn't say except him well we are talking about all things all everything things. else right well it does it only it, it says all things it doesn't say all mm -hmm. things except for him it says it there's not it, it could mean that apart from him no other things came into creation nobody else was used mm -hmm. only jesus um, Apart from Jesus, nobody. If there's a strange, if that, if you put, do it like that, it's um. So if you get, if all things came into existence th through Him, and apart from him mm. not even one thing came into mm. existence so that if you read it that way then you're saying Jesus is the only thing that exists because apart from him nothing came into existence well, well, I couldn't, I couldn't make saying apart from him couldn't it be saying that he's the exception yeah so if you, say, if you change it so all things came into existence through him and except for him nothing came into existence so it means that if you read it with a like except him then it means Jesus is the only thing that exists and that's obviously not true well, well the apart is like saying except isn't yeah it? so if you read if you say except for Jesus nothing came into existence then that means that only Jesus exists but no, well it's not necessarily that's I think uh, we have this one and that's what you read the Colossians 1 16 they are speaking pretty much the same word or yeah. the Apostle Paul uh, adds one word or other things to us uh, to clarify that the statement when you look back into Colossians and this one because pretty much the wording and the, the thought is the same yeah of those, of those two scriptures and that's uh, uh, in, when you look back at Colossians he said at the end all other things have been created through him and for him to express exactly the same thought, the same point, yes, of the creation, how the universe, how everything else was created. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so so you'd say it is possible for a created being to have created all, all things? Oh, that's that what created. scripture say. It's not what, okay. what I believe. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, I'll move on then, I think. Um, so the passage in Isaiah 43 is about a voice calling out in the wilderness, announcing the coming of Jehovah. As verse 9 confirms, here is your God. The passage later referenced in each of the Gospels where we find that John the Baptist is the one calling out in the wilderness as he announces Jesus coming after him. If John the Big Baptist was truly the voice calling out in the wilderness, <laughs> yet he was announcing the arrival of Jesus, then it is clear that Jesus is your God from Isaiah 9. So was Jesus pronouncing himself to be God or John the Baptist or was he calling people to come back to God? What was the purpose of God's of Jesus' ministry here? The objective to save us, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah to that's to, to come back to God. 
because as part of uh, what's happened in the Garden of Eden in when uh, in the first rebellion when Satan deceived Eve and then Adam decided to join the, the rebellion uh, Adam Eve and Satan were expelled from God's family there were no there was no room for humankind for in, in a God's arrangement of things or his family uh, of obedient creatures because they were disobedient and now it was the time uh, to call people back to find those that would like to worship and serve him so that was a part of this to, to save us but that means also to reconcile the humankind with God okay so that's why he said I am the way yeah mm -hmm. um, but so that's, that's through Jesus there's the only <coughs> way you can accept we can uh, uh, come back to God there's no other way for anyone if we bypass Jesus in any way we cannot come back to God okay um maybe should we look at those those scriptures then because i think what is is slightly different to what you're, is that it's is straight straight kind of clearly saying here he comes and then yeah. he says here is god in in isaiah 40 and then well we'll just have a look at it anyway but um so isaiah 40 verse 3 and then mm -hmm. and then 9 uh the voice of one calling out in the wilderness, clear up the way of Jehovah, make a straight highway through the desert for our God, and then he goes on, then on to nine. Uh, go up onto a high mountain, you women bringing good news for Zion. Raise your voice of power, you women bringing good news for Jerusalem. Raise it, do not be afraid. Announce to the cities of Judah, here is your God. So he's, he's saying, he's, um, the, the voice calling in the wilderness is saying, here is God. And then later on in the gospels, we have, the John the Baptist is uh, he's he's called he's he's um, called the voice calling in the wilderness and then he's quite clearly saying here is your Jesus and it, so in the place of where it says here is your God it's, it's saying here is Jesus no, which that does not constitute the equality of the, of the statement it doesn't that's no the calling out uh, clear up clear up the way because that's a way to reconcile the God that's that's uh, it's only through me you can go back to become humans as they were supposed to be. It does not mean I am God. That okay. does not the same. Okay, so it's Jesus is coming to he clear the way to for collect his children, God's children. Okay, all right. Um, that's uh, that's we, of the of the way. Yes, that's all true. But that's yes. what Jesus said. I am the way. I am mm -hmm. the truth. It's lovely. So uh, that's that's uh, definitely there is a very close link with this one, and that's what uh, uh, we see about the John the Baptist preparing the. The nation for the ministry of Jesus, that's all true. But the scriptures do not say that Jesus claimed to be God. No, I just think in, in here it's, it's John is calling Jesus God here, but um, yeah, okay. Um, all right, so we're running in. Uh, within God's Bible, it's clear that the leading apostles were convinced that Jesus was Je Jehovah himself manifest in the flesh. The reason for their belief was that Jesus himself taught them this as fact. He did this through various actions that his followers knew could only be accomplished by Jehovah. Uh, we've already seen how Jesus forgave the sins of a paralyzed man, but there are several other examples too. In Mark 9, 25 to 29, Jesus commands a demon to come out of a child. The disciples tell him that they were not able to do it when they had tried, so Jesus told them that only God was able to perform such exorcisms. In light of Jesus having performed the exorcism and then telling his friends that only God could do such things, would that not be a hint at who he identified himself as? Um, so the question there is what things did Jesus do that only God could do? I mean, expelling the demons was something that only Jehovah could do. Only Jehovah can do. Yeah, as Jesus himself said that. And is that what scriptures uh, confirm? Because yeah, I mean, you can look at this. It says um, this kind can only. Well, the, we can look at the scripture yeah, if you like. Let's look at the scripture. Um, right. Rather than me trying to explain yeah. it. But, um, so it's not. Okay. Jesus taught it as a fact that he was to Which scripture is it? Uh, Mark 9. 9, 25 to 29. Um, so, so Jesus, now noticing that a crowd was rushing toward them, rebuked the clean spirit, saying to it, You speechless and deaf spirit, I order you, get out of him and do not enter into him again. 
After crying out and going through many convulsions, it came out and the child seemed to be dead, so that most of the people were saying, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and raised him up, and he stood up. So after he entered into a house, his disciples asked him privately, How could we not expel it? He said to him, This kind can only come out by prayer. So uh, yeah, he's, he's also done a, a raise from raising from the dead there as well, which yeah. is. Uh, well, he's talking about the raising from the dead uh, uh, right in a moment. But, so he said, "This can kind can come out only by prayer." Right. Yeah. So what, that's, I pray to God when I need something. Yeah. Jesus had to pray to God to have the power. That's that's not what it says in twenty five. In twenty five, it says, "I order you." It doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't say, "My fa- in the name of my Father, okay. you are you are rebuked." It says, "I order," like on his yeah. own authority. That's because he has authority. No, we don't dispute that. Okay. But if Jesus had to pray, because he said, "This kind is only by prayer." Uh, what did Jesus have to do to have the power to expel the demon? Well, he just had it. He off his own back. He said, oh, "I order you." He didn't. He saw. Yeah, he no, saw them. What, yeah, that's yeah. what he said. Was Jesus in in a, a position of responsibility, or did, did he have a power over the demons? Yeah, but where is the where was the power coming from? Um, well, it's, it probably was coming from the Father, but he he yeah. never sort of he never said a prayer to make it happen or anything. He just straight out said, "I I do this this on like." Off, off my own back, where, where then he then immediately tells okay. the disciples, you have to ask for help here. Okay, uh, let's turn to the resurrection. The resurrection of Lazarus is well documented. Okay. If we, because that's the same, the, the power, that's what well, we don't have power to resurrect. No, right? it's coming from Jehovah. Yeah. Uh, John chapter 11, and on somewhat similar thought, so that the host that they brought to Jesus asked, where, where have you laid him? And in 41... 41, yeah. Let's say probably like the 41, he was talking back to Martha, he says, Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? So they took the stone away, then Jesus raised his eyes heavenward and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. True, I knew that you always hear me, but I spoke of, on account of the crowd standing around, so that they may believe that you sent me. And he said that these things, he cried out with the loved ones, Lazarus, come, on, come out. Again, Jesus had the power. He said, Lazarus, come out. Yeah. But Jesus, he said, where did he get the power to resurrect from? So here, yeah, here he's clearly praying. Huh? But in the other passage, so in, you say in the other in passage, passage, it's just said, been this left one out. is only through prayer. So you, t- you didn't have enough faith, you didn't pray strong mm. enough to, to get the power. Okay. Because the, the power exists, and you can be in, infused with the power to perform miracles, and that's what you said. Okay. He was given the power, that was his reason of his reason to come to earth. God gave him the power to do things, to perform acts, to okay. prove to humankind mm-hmm. that this man is a messiah. Okay. Because, well, imagine walking by yourself, uh, walking in the streets, mm-hmm. and saying, Messiah, who would believe you? Yeah, you wouldn't resurrect have to, you'd people. Have to, yeah, then you can get somewhere. And suddenly, yeah. there is a different level of the, something to to your claim. Okay, and that's what Jesus was doing. So he's in in that in the story in Mark, he's like he's prayed, but it just wasn't written down yeah, or something. Um, in some yes, in yeah. some way, that's what what he's told to himself because Jesus gave the power of a demons as well to his apostles because they came to back to him. Lord, even then, demons are obedient to us. Okay, yeah. they had the same power. But this one they couldn't. Yeah. They didn't have enough faith, possibly. They didn't pray f- well later. enough, possibly. Whatever happens, you said you have to pray because this one, this kind, you cannot just say there is much more for that. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's, I think that's fair. Um, all right. So, uh, okay. Jesus also accepts the worship of his followers. In several passages, and there's quite a long list there, um, we see that not only his followers, but even angels worship Jesus. John 9.38 reads, He said, I do put faith in him, Lord, and he did obeisance to him. But in Acts 10.25.26, Peter receives the same treatment and tells the man who bowed to him that he should not do so to other men. The word translated from the Greek to obeisance is proskuneo and is often transla- translated elsewhere as worship, usually in regards to Jehovah, e.g. in Luke 4.8.
Um, in Revelation 19.10, John the Apostle vows to worship an angel, again using the word proskuneo, but, uh, but like Peter, the angel tells him that worship is only for God. Unlike Peter and the angel, Jesus never warns his disciples that they should not worship or bow to him. He accepts what they are doing on every occasion. If Jesus was truly the Messiah and Saviour and nothing more than God's perfect man, would he accept the worship and respect that only God deserves? Um, the last truth that I fully agree with you. No, he would not. No. And uh, no, he never did. Because uh, the events you are referring to does not constitute the worship or acceptance of uh, Jesus as, as a God. Because so that was not what was happening. Was Jesus put in a, a, a higher position than all other humans by God? Uh, he, I, th oh, I so think he was people, naturally, yeah. yeah that's, he <laughs> came here and to become a lord and a king, right? Yeah. So, uh, can people bow down to a king? Um, yeah, you can bow, bow to a king as, in a sort of a sign of respect, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, we do that, yeah, that's people of, of authority. So if people of authority do we respect them. Like in a court, we will say you have to stand up and what happens if you don't stand up? You're in trouble. Mm. So that's uh, definitely, uh, Jesus knew that he is not just a man like you and I. Uh, and angels, did they know that angel was more important than him, than, that Jesus was more important than, than them? What was what Jesus' position in the heaven before? Oh, for me, he, for me, he was God. So okay, um, <laughs> so the Bible refers to him as an archangel. Okay, oh, yeah, I don't believe that. Well, yeah, that's, that's a whole different. Okay, that's fine. Right. So that's we can back to that. Yeah, that's fine. So we can come back to that. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. uh, uh, we can uh, we discuss can come, that later. Yeah, we'll come back to that because <laughs> yeah. So uh, the obeisance or uh, the, the events that you uh, are uh, referring to. They are not uh, worship. Has anyone of, of them actually prayed to Jesus? Sorry. Has anyone prayed to mm. Jesus? Yeah. Uh, Stephen does as he gets as he's signed. Mm -hmm. He does not pray to Jesus. He sees the uh, Jesus on the right hand of, of God. Yeah, that is true. He doesn't say he's praying to Jesus. Um, so what the Bible I says. I'm praying, I can see the Jesus here. Yeah, that's the, he said he had a vision there of the heavens. Uh, that, that is true, but it doesn't. It doesn't say that he was actually praying to Jesus. Okay, I, I can't remember the verse, but I'm, no. I'm, I think he yeah. does cry out to Jesus. But um, yeah, but the the point yeah. here in this one is that the Greek words is proskuneo is used every time, and it's in in here. Sometimes it's it's a base a base and other times it's worship, and there doesn't seem to be any kind of pattern except to mm -hmm. kind of. Um, the, the, yeah, it's yeah. just it's just it's the one yeah. word that's been yeah. translated two ways, but there's no mm -hmm. reason to do it. Whereas, um, yeah, in Luke four eight it says proskuneo to Jehovah, mm -hmm. and then proskuneo to Peter and the angel. They say no, don't do that. We mustn't yeah. have that. And then proskuneo to Jesus. He doesn't say anything. So, okay. it, that, that's mm -hmm. that's the point. There is that um, what, whatever it is in English, the Greek word is always the same. Okay. And. Yeah, so G Jesus, Jesus and Jehovah t accept the proskuneo. Uh, Peter, humans, angels, they refuse the proskuneo. And that, that's, that's the pattern that is a uh, problem. Okay. So, uh, sorry, I'm looking at the time. And we are halfway through. Oh, okay. Yeah, so long. That's what <laughs> I was saying, it's quite a lot to go. Uh, and I, I have another engagement later. Oh, sorry, so, okay. Uh, we have one left over. So we have the uh, Hebrews one that we left out. Well, uh, I left out from, yeah. from the discussion, and let's pick up the conversation next time on on this on this part. Would that work for you? Um, if you could stop right now, because you, I, I you need to go. Yeah, okay, to go. sorry. Yeah, I didn't realize you was in a rush. No, to, no, no, that's um, it's not rush. We've been here for last two hours. Yeah, no? we've been here two <laughs> <Okay>. hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's a very interesting conversation. Yeah. Uh, just one thing. Uh, I think in, so far I have never uh, found someone who prepared so well <laughs> for a discussion. I'm really impressed. All right, thank and you. the things you found are very, very nice. That's uh, your points and uh, what found in the scriptures, uh, as you've seen. We definitely agree with most what you what you, yeah. what you what you are saying. Yes, there, there are things that uh, we try to to uh, to explain our position, you explain your position. But uh, by and large, I think that's it's nice, and uh, there are very few people that uh, come to the uh, similar conclusion about the Trinity of of this kind. Because for most, it's definitely what you refuted straight as a modality yeah. that is non-existent. So, yeah. uh, I will, if you don't mind, I'll keep that. Yeah, as long as you bring it back next time. Yeah. 
I wish they were to put it back to, to my uh, Mr. Fog there. Yeah, okay, no problem. And then, and then you can and tell you've got the notes and things. Can, yeah, yeah, okay. But should, should we keep out? Yeah, if you want yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, that's fine there for you. So don't worry. Yeah. Does. So, um, well, no, that's next week I'll be here, but it sounds like in two weeks' time, probably that's. Yeah, that, that's a half term. Half term. Um, that will be November then, next time. Okay, yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm away next week again. Yeah, anyway, okay, so, so that's fine. Mm. So, I'm saying it's been a pleasure, Louis. Yeah, uh, thanks for coming. Yeah. yeah, I really enjoyed the, the conversation. I, I can hope, tell you did. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. Yes. You do. So, so you did. Yeah, very good. <laughs> I hope you do. You do yeah. as well. Uh, do you conclude the prayer as well? Uh, yeah. Yes, really. Yes. Mm. Would you uh, mind saying prayer for us, please? Sure, I'll be around loving you. I've been approaching now to uh, thank you for your spirit being with us, uh, helping us uh, in our study today. We know it's a complicated subject and uh, uh, difficult to understand and uh, so we ask for your continued help in doing this in the future and um, help us all to get a clear understanding. Uh, we know we're uh, uh, weak and leaky vessels and uh, it's difficult to hold many of the uh, things that you teach us and we know there's a, uh, well, an eternity of, of learning to be done. We ask that you uh, bless our efforts as we are uh, making this start. And uh, we thank you for uh, all the good things that you give to us. We ask you to continue blessing uh, on Lewis and his family. And, uh, and uh, we ask that you help us to be able to help them to the best of our ability. And we offer this prayer and thanks now for your son and our only King, Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Right, so that's very yeah, stimulating. Yeah, definitely, thank you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you find it stimulating? Yeah, right? definitely, yeah. and it's, uh, as, um, a lot of it is I would like to understand like where you're coming from yeah. as well. I'm not mm. I'm not trying to sort of beat you down or anything. No, it's, no, no. no. Like, <laughs> or, yeah, you like being beaten down. No, yeah. <laughs> very, very, very nice. Mm. So, yeah, and it's, it's helped like, to kind of understand sort of where mm. some of the yep. places you're coming from a little bit more. But, yeah, um, so, yeah, you've got the notes there, so if you wanted yeah, to. Yeah, the notes, yeah. but, uh, we'll um, pick up the conversation conversation next time when we see each other. Yeah, um, and hopefully we'll... Probably feel better because if I am usually um, more well known for misplacing things. Uh -huh. I will keep that, I will just leave it, if you don't mind, I will leave that with you. Okay, yeah, of course, yeah, and no, that's no, I've got so it. So it will not get lost, otherwise, okay. knowing me, I will come back next time and... Uh, <laughs> Did you take <laughs> notes of the bits you wanted I to... I know, I remember that. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. Yes, uh, <laughs> the cubist one and then the, the obvious I will definitely... Look at that. Okay, great. So that's what we'll pick up next time. Yeah. Right? Good. All right, so thank we you. We'll see each other before in the meantime, but next time I'll be here sometime in November. Okay, yeah, no problem. So we'll yeah. see you as usual. Yeah, of course. Study. Yeah, definitely. And you're away, did you say? Uh, just for the weekend, so oh, Tuesday's okay. fine. Oh, yeah. See, Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, okay, thank you very much. No, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Okay, so we got sort of halfway through the pack. Um, um, yeah, pretty much was halfway through. So if we have another one, we might be able to finish. Um, I mean, you might notice I was going pretty light on them and not pressing things too much, but that's because I think in the second half, it just kind of, the way I've designed it, it comes out a bit more naturally. So hopefully things will be pressed a bit more if we do this again I mean half expecting them not to ever come back again but I mean well, they're, they're coming the, the two are coming back on Tuesday so um, might be alright I uh, hope you enjoyed that and at the very least it's as we say it was got some um, perspective of where they're coming from 